1977, a small factory in Colvin Leicester got to work on something that would change the lives of countless people. Little did they realise that people were still care enough 40 years later to sit and listen to a guy waffle on about that product. This is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. Hello there. Yes, this is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. This is episode 19, and I am Darth Mark. And on this week's show, we're going to have an interview with one of the lovely people at the prop store. And she's going to be telling us about the upcoming auction at the prop store. I've also visited uh, Pallet Toy in uh, Colville, Leicester this week, so I'll be talking a bit about that. But before all that, let's have this. The Star Wars Tracker Report. Yes, as always, we've got the Star Wars Tracker Report. And this will be covering the market activity for the 19th of October to the 25th of October 2019. And in all, 816 items were sold, with a total of £48,400. Starting off with the top five accessories. And number five, we have a Tatooine Skiff Kenner Loose, sold in the United States for $332 which is a bit of a rarity and something I've not actually ever seen out of the box. At number four, we have a 12-inch Darth Vader. Kenner, Star Wars A, picture, picture box LP logo, sold in the United States for $350. At number three, I have a Millennium Falcon. We don't usually see Millennium Falcons on this list. Uh, Kenner, Empire Strikes Back here, Storm, Stormtrooper scene, sold in the United States for $405. At number two, we have another Tatooine skiff, Kenner Loose, sold in the United States for six hundred and seventy dollars, and that's for loose. Imagine what price to go for in the box. But at number one this week, we have a Jawa sand crawler, a Kenner Star Wars Air trading scene, sold in the United States for six hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So I'm thinking of doing something a bit different with this Star Wars tracker. Uh, maybe do a focus. On one item per week. Uh, you'll see why I've chosen this one as we go into the top five loose figures. At number five, we have Yak Face Kenner, sold in the United Kingdom for £249. Number four, we have a Yak Face Kenner, sold in Australia for $489. That's Australian dollars. Number three, we have a Yak Face AFA85 Kenner. Sold it in the United States for $495. So you've got three yak faces there. So what I want to do is I want to have a, a bit of a look at this yak face figure. It's a bit of an odd one, is the yak face. It wasn't available in the United States. So that's why it's really uh, got that rarity factor. It's not rare whatsoever. There's thousands of them out there. It's just that the weren't available in the United States so it's become quite a bit of a cult status. I mean the thing is the the last 17 all command a high price maybe not the uh, Anakin Skywalker, now you can get that for about £20-25 but this Yak Face, I'm just going to go through the Star Wars tracker and let you know the prices um, in the last 6 months 33 were sold uh, the minimum was £132. The highest was £401. So that averages out about £246. So you're talking about £250 for a yak first these days. Again, it all depends on the condition, whether it is graded, unfortunately. You know my position on grading, especially loose figures. But to be honest with you, this is probably one loose figure that I might consider getting graded i'd rather send a loose figure than a uh, carded figure but i do have a yak face i don't like it i don't like the yak face it's just you have to have it have it for a full run and the one that i bought was uh, fairly cheap well not really cheap but cheaper than you the average so it's there with the rest of the figures in my cabinet maybe it's something i will send away for grading just just a bit of an experiment Maybe something to do a bit of a video on. So just looking at that highest one at the £401, it was sold in the United States, where most of the higher prices will be paid. As I say, it wasn't available. 
and the lowest at £132 was sold in the United Kingdom, which uh, tells you a lot. It also shows in the three that has been sold this week, you've got the £249 one in the United Kingdom and the $495 one in the United States. I know there's a bit of a difference in uh, prices, but there's not that much difference in the conversion rate these days. And it is an AFA 85, so you can you can say that yeah, it's uh, you're paying a bit more for a grade one, but I just think I don't think it's because it's uh, sold in the United States. So I'm going to feature one item every week from now on. Uh, I might see what what is the popular thing on the tracker, or I might just choose one. So we'll carry on with the loose figures. So at number two, we have a cloth cape jower, which is a lily lady. Sold in Mexico for eight hundred and twenty dollars, and at number one we have another Jawa, but a vinyl cape one this time, an AFA eighty five, Kenner. Sold in the United States for one thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars. I can understand getting that graded, as it's uh, a teeny tiny little figure. I mean, the, the last two, the, they're both Jawas, and the tiny little figures, very expensive. The uh, vinyl cape, obviously, because it's quite rare. And the uh, Jawa, well, to a Lily Lady one, is very rare. So, on to the top five mock figures now. Uh, number five, we have a Ben Obi Wan Kenobi white hair, AFA 75, Kenner, Star Wars 12 A card, sold in the United States for $862. Number four, we have Imperial Stormtrooper, AFA 80, Kenner, Star Wars 12 B card. Sold in the United States for $960. At number 3, we have a Biker Scout. Kenner Canada, Return of the Jedi, 77A. Sold in Holland for $1,000. At number 2, we have a Luke Skywalker Farm Boy Yellow Hair, FA80+. Plus. Kenner Star Wars 12C card, sold in the United States for $1,281. And at number 1, we have a Han Solo Small Head. AFA 85, it's uh, very rare they get uh, a small head on a card. And it's a uh, Star Wars 12B, Kenner Star Wars 12B card. So that is really rare. And that was sold in the United States for $3,500. So that's your Star Wars tracker for this week. If you would like to join in on all the fun and track your Star Wars items, head to www.starwarstracker.com. Any for your thoughts? On the line today, we have a very special person. <laughs> uh, just wants to uh, let us know all about the uh, prop store. And it's Sean Taylor. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. So, I really appreciate being here today. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a really special interview. Uh, we just want to know all about the prop store, really. Can you tell us something about the history? So Prop Store is uh, 21 years old this year. Um, really? It was started by Stephen Lane. Um, he actually started off um, collecting vintage Star Wars toys, which oh. probably weren't, weren't quite so vintage <laughs> 21 years ago. Um, and so he was doing all the, the, the convention circuits, uh, buying and selling, and someone came up to him and offered him a Rebel Blaster. And <laughs> he suddenly realised that, oh, hang on a minute, this is a way that I can really connect with this film that had such an impact on me. I wonder if anyone else is doing the sort of thing. Um, they weren't. And then the businessman that he is has um, built up a right. little transatlantic empire. That's probably the best time to uh, get into it. Yes, it's definitely. A lot cheaper than they are now. <laughs> definitely. I think it was about £500, he says. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's a lot. Of our listeners can really appreciate that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, he's done really well, and uh, good on him. Yeah, we're we're trying to kind of stretch out into other collectible realms that are associated with films and costumes and stuff like yeah. that. So the poster auctions that we do now, the the vintage toys and collectibles, as well as sort of single title auctions like John Wick or Warcraft. Right, yeah. I mean, I've, 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 we're going to talk about the, the auction, upcoming auction, but um, the some some of the things are, are amazing that you've got on there. But obviously, this is a Star Wars podcast, so I'm just going to ask you about the Star Wars. Of course. Today. Yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, I can appreciate all the other other props from other films because I'm a bit of a geek and I don't love all all movies really, um, mainly eighties and nineties. But uh, I mean, I like the I like the the Marvel ones. But, uh, I like the early early movies and all the props. I can all geek out on. <laughs> It's such a shame, though, that the that kind of era, no one had the intention of saving anything. So yeah. it all it all got chucked in the skip or disposed of, destroyed. Um, so that stuff is super rare nowadays. Yeah, that, I mean, that was, as as we've been talking earlier on about um, my visit to uh, Palatoy yesterday, I was talking to all the ex ex Palatoy employees, mm. and. The, uh, <laughs> They said the same. They said the wish we'd, that we'd have known. They said like it was just a job to us, and um, the th- I said they threw most of the things away. I think actually <laughs> know where the the landfill is, where everything was thrown oh, away. <laughs> God, they need like a little treasure map, and there'd be oh, oh, yeah. of people going with spades digging it all up. Yeah, everybody seems to know where it is, but nobody wants to tell you where. Oh. <laughs> So I think I think uh, you'd be you'd be quite interested in that one, <laughs> in uh, digging it up and uh, getting it on the next auction. That'd oh God, yeah, yeah, the uh, the landfill auction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that'd a certain be, ring to it. That would be a good start. Good start. <laughs> so where where do you actually get your items? We get items from all walks of life, really. Um, one of the most significant pieces we had was a first order Stormtrooper helmet last year that we wow. sold through well, on behalf of the NSPCC. We oh, raised over a hundred thousand pounds just on that one item, but that actually oh, came right. from Michael Kaplan, the costume designer. All right, yeah. Um, so we've had stuff like that, and then we had a, a New Hope. Stormtrooper helmet this year, which came from a gentleman in Canada whose aunt had had some sort of promotional party back in the 70s um, and had just been sort of given it because no one wanted it. Um, <sighs> about 18 months ago, we realised what it was he actually had and wow. then it was worth quite so much money. <laughs> so it, it can be direct from studios, it can be other collectors, it can be families of people who've just been hoarding stuff that they've acquired over the years other collectors who want to kind of refresh their collection sometimes that's un- that's unbelievable i'd love to find something like that in somebody's loft <laughs> oh god it's just uh, the, the things that you think are hidden away somewhere yeah i saw her in coville yesterday and i was just thinking that all the houses i actually went past the old woolworths um you can always you can always tell where, where the woolworths used to be can't you in any, yeah. any town I usually play that game, I hunt the Woolworths, but um, I, I, went, I went past and I thought, oh, I'd love to go in that uh, that loft, see if there's anything up there. And <laughs> but, uh, but no, no, the, yeah, it's it's kind of a dream of mine, but never mind. One day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, who, who have you got on your team? Does, who, who values them? Mostly it would be probably Stephen taking into account um, kind of current market trends, yeah. um, specifically with props and costumes. It's who it's attributed to. So something for, from Han Solo is going to be much more desirable than someone who was 14th Stormtrooper from the left, say. Yeah, yeah. Um, the condition as well can have a yeah, real, definitely. real impact on it if it's pristine then it's one thing. If it's hanging on by a thread, not so much. Um, and kind of market saturation, is there a lot of this sort of thing out there? Has it never been seen before? It's it's quite a complicated little formula that um, has to be taken into account, um, usually by Stephen, but we do have uh, Tim Laws, our general manager as well, who gets really heavily involved in that um, yeah. with our research team. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to get involved in that. Um, I mean, I do work. I do work for Hanson's at the moment as a, as a Star Wars toy expert. <laughs> but, Fantastic. But uh, yeah, I would like to branch out and help other people as well. But, yeah, well, there's there's so many ways that people get involved with us nowadays, either as a as a consultant or. Yeah, that's that's uh, maybe we'll maybe talk about that later. It's all good fun. <laughs> <laughs> so on a personal level. Uh, what do do you collect anything? Uh, I do. Um, when I manage to to save up my wages, 
I've got uh, what have I got? I've got stuff from Stargate. I'm a wow. massive Lord of the Rings fan. My daughter's actually called Arwen. <laughs> nice <one. laughs> So I've got um, Bilbo Baggins' little chest from his mantelpiece. Oh, I got that God. a few years ago. Um, but everything from that film, from Peter yeah. Jackson's hoarding. Oh. And we had we had so many pieces in our last auction that I was just sort of, I could see them from my desk, just sitting there looking longingly oh. at uh, kind of Eowyn's sword and oh, the, the Witch hell. King crown and the dagger. It's just a oh, dream come true. Um, <laughs> oh, but but is... I'm a... I can imagine. I was a Harry Potter child, so All right. uh, anything that comes up from Harry Potter, yeah. I kind of geek out about as well. Oh, cool. uh, I kind of missed the Star Wars era, yeah. kind of came up the tail end of that. Um, but I just think there's so many things that make you just go, wow, and I hate the word, but that are iconic. So behind <laughs> my desk, I have, yeah. I have a full set of hoverboards on the wall. Oh, board, you're joking. Which I... I'm terribly blasé now. I kind of just walk up to my desk and, and sit down. I don't notice them. Oh. But people come up the stairs and go, oh, my God, that's my <laughs> McFly's hoverboard. Yeah, I think and I would I, as well. It's such a delight to see that kind of wonder and excitement in people that, that come around and do what I did 10 years ago when I came for a tour and went, if you ever get a job. <laughs> We've had bat suits and things like that from, from Warner Brothers and you just go, wow, well, yeah, that is seriously cool. <laughs> So yeah, I bet it's uh, I bet it's tempting. I, 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 like you say, I, I bet you're spending most of your wage on on things that come in that uh, you really like. Yes, it's it's a dangerous place to work, um, but fortunately, if it's a uh, if if it's small enough, you can get away with kind of having it on your desk for a couple of months before it gets sold. <laughs> so you, it's like a I'm the guardian of it temporarily. Oh, so lovely. Gets it out of your system a little bit. That's a... Stephen's got all the best stuff in his office. Oh, of course he has. <laughs> I think he's got Joker in there. It's just, ugh, it's amazing. Oh my! Yeah, sounds like a, a perfect job, really. It, it is a bit manic at times because we do have. I think a month ago we had our live auction for entertainment memorabilia. Then on Tuesday we've got a poster auction, oh, okay. and then in a couple of weeks we've got the vintage toy auction, which is where we've got a lot of the uh, the Palatoy content. Yeah, that's what I want, I'm coming on to next. I mean, I've. Uh... I did try and print out the whole catalogue. And... <laughs> oh, dear me. No, it costs us enough to print it professionally. Oh, I know, <laughs> Don't my, get uh, your poor printer. My printer just kicked off. and <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. So, no. so I've got about 100 pages. And, uh... PDFs are fine. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because I, I, I was on the train journey, so I thought, oh, I'll print, I'll print some out and have a look. But, uh, like I say, it's just, there's so much stuff. Really, some, some amazing stuff. I mean, the lecture sets and you know, things like that. I'm, I'm, yeah, and the, the Shreddies boxes. Yeah. It's just it's, like people had the foresight to, to, to store this yeah. stuff. It's amazing. I mean, like people didn't didn't store the Star Wars figures, but they stored some cereal boxes. <laughs> yeah. Like who who knew? No. Like what, what stuff do people, again, have in their lofts yeah. that they went, oh, my kid played with those. 30 years ago let's send them to a charity shop or oh let's just chuck away all of these battered death star boxes yeah. it's like no that's the most valuable bit oh, i know yeah there's um some really interesting figures the uh poppy boba fett things like that i mean i don't know if you've seen the hex auction over in america at the moment the, their boba fett at the moment's gone up to about one hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Dollars. Oh my word! I had not heard about no, that. No, it's uh, it's like a five, is it like a two week auction or something on it, and it's and it's already broken the record so far. But it's going to be it's going to be oh, sold wow. next week. But they expect like five hundred thousand dollars on just one little bit of plastic. <laughs> How? Yeah, it is. Oof. It is amazing. Um, I mean, you you have some amazing things. But. Yes, and it's it's a new kind of genre to to me especially. So I'm I'm only just learning about what makes it kind of desirable in terms of props and costumes. Um, I'm all over it, but yeah, just learning why someone would spend half a million dollars having, on, like you say, a, a little yeah, bit of plastic that but, amount of money to just just to spend on something like that. Well, yeah, you could you could buy a very nice house. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd love a rocket fire in Boba Fett myself, but obviously I'm not going to ever have that kind of money. So No, and you do wonder, kind of, with props and costumes, you often have exhibitions um, where people can go and, and look at these and appreciate yeah. these, whereas this, it's was going to go into a private collection and maybe sit in a kind of temperature controlled box or, or something like that just to make sure it stays pristine yeah. and it just won't get to be appreciated so it's it's definitely a different kind of collecting it is yeah i mean i've got a i've got a six foot bloody Darth Vader stood next to me here in my, in my living room <laughs> fantastic but... no that's good i've got two mannequins in my hallway no, no. so i know that feeling <laughs> <laughs> dissuade robbers I, I should yeah, get that is uh, true. discounted insurance that is true. nobody nobody steals anything from my my place um, no I've got a flintlock pistol and a sword as well so I'm I'm really set <laughs> <laughs> yeah and again replicas when they're made fantastically well they're super popular we've had um, replica stormtroopers and Darth Vader C-3PO R2-D2 yeah and like especially the Don Post ones, they're just made beautifully, and oh, yeah. it's the closest ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population they're ever going to get to Darth Vader or, or C three PO because the original ones just don't exist anymore. You occasionally no. see some hands from maybe some from C three PO or <laughs> uh, I think we had a foot battery harness from R two D two in our last auction. That's that's it. You're never going to see a, a complete one that's running around no doing everything i don't think no. even, even anthony daniels has got a, a full soap <laughs> no and again just no one thought it would be something that needed to be no, kept exactly. escaping holes in the lucasfilm archive because yeah. they just threw it all away or chucked it in a skip <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could get these bit part actors that go around the uh, convention scene now uh, signing autographs and like they all say the same that they never thought that they'd be doing this 40 years ago no, and just the, like an acting job. The the Stormtrooper helmet this year, we discovered that it said Sid inside. Right. And tracked down that actually the, the guy who wore it was a chap called Sid Rag. Um yeah. we tracked him down, he does convention circuits and he, he came to our exhibition and met the consigner, kind of put the helmet on and it was kind of like, Wow, he's not seen this in kind of forty oh, years. Bloody hell. <laughs> It was quite a it was quite a moment to be honest. And I bet, I bet it were emotional. Yeah, he was just overwhelmed really I bet he was. because at the time no one knew what Star Wars was going to become. He was just like, yeah, it was just a job. Yeah. I'll I'll stand over there. Job. I'll I'll stand to the <laughs> left of Princess Leia as she gets intimidated by Darth Vader. Yeah. It meant nothing. It is. And, it's amazing, yeah. isn't it? But yeah, the fact that he was putting it on inside, I was kind of clenching, going, yeah. no, don't break it. But it was it was all the consigners saying, yeah, 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 put it on, put it on. Yeah, don't don't bump, bump your head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he was that one. No, no, that's, <laughs> I don't know if it was Chris Bunn. I, don't know, Chris, I, know, I know the name, but it'll come to me. I think Chris Bunn was the first, first ever Stormtrooper, but uh, uh. yeah, I'm a bit geeky like that, I know. <laughs> it's good to know things like that. Yeah. As long as it doesn't push push things out like family birthdays and things. No, you're fine. no. <laughs> we'll ever do that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just like oh, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't be here now talking about it, would we? If it if it hadn't have happened, it's. Uh, I see. I mean, there are other series like you say, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Star Trek. Um, I know there's a lot of James Bond stuff in the in the auction. But I don't think it would be this popular. Anything would be this popular if it wasn't for Star Wars. Well, no, was it was it Kenner that had to stop doing? They, they stopped making GI Joe, or had to make it at the same time as GI Joe, which was kind of a, a competitor. Yeah, license. Um, yeah, um, I was like, as I, again, I keep mentioning. Uh, Talked to the people at uh, Colville yesterday. The um, they actually said Star Wars killed. Killed Palatoy. Really? Funnily enough, yeah, because because it, it's it killed Action Man. Huh. Um, because the bigger scale figures were just thrown out the window. That's why they started making the smaller uh, Action Force, and that became really popular, especially yeah during the Falklands War. Because they were they were a lot more kind of 
playable, weren't they? Because they were, they were yeah. so much smaller. You could do yeah. so much more with them because I think the G.I. Joe was completely disproportionate to the Jeep that they had. Exactly. Exactly. The, uh, the, I mean, you, didn't have a, you couldn't have any play sets. If, if you had to have a, a vehicle, it was going to be massive. Yeah. But, but one of the reasons why they made the uh, smaller scale is because of all the ships. So they could make ships for the for the small smaller figures. So yeah, it's uh, it's it was really cool, but it's really tragic that it's uh, taking so many companies down. I mean, it took kind of down in the end because uh, there were no Star Wars, so they stopped making obviously stopped making Star Wars. They they, re- they did try to make some more, but yeah. uh, they couldn't, and then there was no interest. That's why there's. Uh, a landfill for <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously with the resurgence, with the well, the, the prequels and then the the newer trilogy, the spin-offs and things like that, I wonder if they'd ever kind of get the band back together, as it were, and yeah. start it all up again, or if there are too many licensees out there now, it's owned by Disney. Yeah, I, Disney I mean, make their own stuff. Hasbro are trying, trying the best, but uh, it just, I just think it's kids, kids don't play with toys anymore. No, it's all computer games and things. Yeah. So do you think that was, that's going to be the next collecting thing, computer, computer games, or what do you think is going to be the next big thing? Possibly, but then again, everything's all going digital. You get digital downloads for everything, or it's an app. Exactly. It's, it's... There's, there's nothing tangible that you can own no. anymore. Like so many films are going CGI, so you're never going to own a minion, say, from Despicable Me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So they're going to be less props. Yeah, um, sort of Avatar. Yeah, I, I know they had real world stuff, but the majority of that film was set exactly. in a completely computer generated world. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never thought of it looked like that. Yeah. So yeah. that's where more and more like the the production material comes into play. So yeah. designs or, or storyboards, yeah, things like that. Scripts, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of they'd become more desirable because it's kind of the only stuff yeah, available. True. Yeah, right. Well, that's, it's been a fascinating um, talk today. Uh, when When is the auction? Uh, Vintage Toys and Collectibles is on the 26th and 27th of November, so in a couple of weeks. Lovely. And where can people view that or log in? Uh, or... If you just head over to propstoreauction.com, uh, you can register to bid on there, sort of eBay style, leave your absentee bid. Uh, you can bid via phone or you can come down in person to our offices uh, just outside the M25. Fantastic. I really do appreciate you talking to me today. Um, um, my pleasure, uh, Mark. And you can, you're welcome anytime. Perfect. Well, likewise, you have to come down for a visit. I will do. I'll take you up on that one. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Somebody once told me the world is gonna grow me. I hate the shark. This gold in the shed. So there you go. I think you'll agree with me that it was a very interesting conversation. And we wish them well in their auction. I will keep you updated in the next couple of weeks. We'll get closer. And I will give you the list of the items and what the final sale price is going to be for each one. Uh, something I alluded to there was uh, my visit this week to Colville in Leicester. And as you know from my <laughs> from my titles, Colville is where the Palatoy factory is. I went there in my role as a valuer for Hanson's Auctions. And we met some wonderful people. A lot of ex-employees for Palatoy. We even got to, to see a contract, a uh, work contract for the warehouse to 1971, and yeah, it was uh, 95 pence an hour. Just think getting paid to work at Balatoy and handle not just Star Wars. I mean, that's a, that's what why we're here, but uh, any of the iconic toys that Balatoy made. So we did see a lot of the action men, a lot of action men. Uh, we got some He-Man in. I know that's not Balatoy, but uh, we were valuing all kind of toys. A fair bit of Star Wars, not as uh, much as I'd have liked to have had, because that's what, why I was there. But uh, the, they have an exhibition going on down there, and uh, there was a lot of um, Star Wars in the exhibition. Obviously, they had a cardboard Palatoy Death Star, which I'm still after. Uh, and the guy that um, had lent his Star Wars stuff actually came to talk to us as well. Uh, he came to show us a... Um, 
a graded Stormtrooper on the 12B card back. So yeah, it was quite interesting to meet all these people. But the best thing was meeting all the ex-employees that was actually vol volunteering for this. Uh, it's, it's like an exhibition. It's kind, kind of a museum type thing. The kids were coming in from school to make toys, to, to actually mould toys, which is quite interesting. It's something that uh, I want to get involved with because we want to get kids playing with toys again. It's, they're going to have, about, have no collectors left. It's, gen it's a generational thing, is this collecting like. Uh, we have the train collectors, the die-cast um, soldier collectors, Britons, things like that. Dinkies, Matchbox, Corgi cars, collectors. And we have the Action Man collectors. And then us Star Wars collectors. After that, you've got like He-Man, Ghostbusters, Transformers, things like that. Turtles, even. But uh, nothing's really as good as Star Wars, I in my opinion, and probably in yours as well, because you're listening to this podcast. Um, what's what's after that? What 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 are people? I mean, I alluded to it in the conversation there. What what are people going to collect in the future? As the props go, like like she says, like uh, Sean says, the there's no props. There's not a lot of props anymore because we've got CGI, and uh, it's going to be all paperwork it's going to be contracts scripts things like that but toy wise what what we're going to have in the future people like collecting the the star wars anymore because i mean the black series yes yes the yeah they are going to command quite a bit i think in the future but these later ones the first couple of waves are collecting a lot of money at the moment but they've reissued them so you don't know if you're going to get an original one or uh, or a later one. And these are just mass produced now. You can equate it to like the vintage Star Wars. is like the first couple of waves of the Black Series. Nobody thought they were going to be collectible. And if you've got one, you're lucky. And then people cut on on and they get mass produced. So like the Power of the Force 2 line is like... Black Series now, they're not going to be worth a hell of a lot. Even even the the, the Power of the Force two from the nineteen nineties, a lot of people collected them. A lot of people kept them. There are a lot of, a lot of them um, floating about, still carded. So they're not going to be worth a lot. That is that is why, because they're mass produced and people know that they could be collectible. The vintage line, the vintage collection, not the vintage collection. The current one. I mean, the original, seventy-eight to uh, eighty-five. They are always going to be highly valuable because they're getting rarer. The the cards, the bubbles, the bubbles are eventually going to fall off. Look at the sellotape inside them. Sellotape never lasts. It always. I had, I saw a lot of the uh, the sellotape on the uh, Action Man stuff yesterday. He says I've never had it. I've never opened it, but the the sellotape had come come away, so it looked like it'd been opened, but he had, he hadn't actually opened it. <laughs> so it's going to be the same for the Star Wars vehicles, and maybe the bubbles, the the glue on the bubbles, and how long's that going to last? It's lasted forty years, so it's not too bad. But how long longer is it going to last? But uh, talking to these exploratory employees, they were so interesting. I could have talked to them forever. Uh, I've got, they've, I've given them my contact details, and uh, hopefully we're going to get them on the podcast and have a, a nice chat with them, which would be very interesting. Uh, the lands, the landfill that is in Colville. Everybody in Colville knows where it is, but nobody will say anything. But gathering information from all these people. I kind of know whereabouts it's gonna it could be, but uh, like them, we're sworn to secrecy. Uh, the land is uh, owned by somebody, and they don't want anybody on that land. So that's it's it's somewhere that's not gonna get built on. Put it that way. So they're gonna be there for a long time. One of the guys, Stuart, he uh, mentioned is uh, when he was a kid scrambling around and finding parts and everybody everybody all his friends he's just scrambling on the uh, 
on the tip where all the parts were dumped and it built a complete action man and it's uh, it's in one of the cabinets in the exhibition so all in all it was a fantastic day and one I'd like to repeat very soon maybe I'll go in a different guise as uh, a podcaster and interviewer they did seem very open to uh, talking about their experiences so we can look forward to that but I've waffled on quite enough for this week I hope you've enjoyed it we've had a bit of everything and I hope you'll listen in next week so until then may the toys be with you just one more round friend then homeward bound friend don't forget me in your dreams just one more song friend and then so long friend the nights get shorter it seems just one more rhyme friend yes it's a crime friend but you know time friend time can fly so it's good night friend good night but night